Hey guys, Chris here, we're doing Project Nerf, and today we're going to take a look at modifying the D-Dart Tempest. Let's do it. All right, as you can see, we've got it uh, brand new here in the pack. I grabbed this at Target the other day, and uh, it really, really looked cool to me. It's a uh, kind of a handheld wrist blaster with a 28 dart capacity so let's get it out of the package get some batteries in it and see what it does stock before we uh, rip it apart and see if we can't make it better all right got the chrono out so let's see if we can get some readings on it we're gonna flip it on and uh, give it a go here Okay, uh, let's take a look here. We had 15 on the set with a high of 53, a low of 42, and an average of 47 uh, FPS. So uh, definitely not what you would call a performer, though the fire rate uh, didn't look too bad when I was holding it down there. Uh, but uh, obviously we got a little work to do, so let's get it on the bench and get it ripped apart. So we've got the D-Dart Tempest on the bench, so we're going to start with the, uh, the battery tray. It's got a little screw here. Put that out and pull down. It's got a little four AAA connector in here. So the first thing we're going to do is pop these batteries. Got that. Now, right here where my fingers are, so we're going to take those out and see if we can expose the flywheel cage and see what's going on with that because obviously we don't have much crush uh, going on with this one. Whoops. Drop the screw. There we go. There we are. Alright, so that's okay. Then there's screws down the side of the body here. I'm far more concerned with this one for uh, fire rate. So at the very bottom of the handle, you can see two silver screws right in there. Hopefully you can see that right right in here. Hopefully we take those off and the, uh, the wheel will kind of loosen up for us and make our life a little easier. I don't know, I've never worked on one of these or taken one apart, so I can't tell you really anything about it. But that's okay. All right, that, that, that came loose. Looks like the whole back of it will come off here. Silver screws on the back of the collar. So I think we're going to try to get the electric out here. Definitely with a smaller end. Might even help me avoid dropping some of them. Now the cool thing about the uh, pusher on this is it's a actually it's a manual pusher. Just this little little piece of plastic rides in and out like this and pushes the darts into the flywheel. So that's really cool. So there's nothing to mess with for that. So if we can get the wheel to rotate faster, uh, we'll uh, increase our fire rate. There we go. That came off. 
right, so the screws in the back, okay, and you can see the gear mechanism in here, so obviously there's a motor in there that's going to turn the whole wheel. There's a corresponding gear here, and one on the inside of the ring. I don't know how well you can see the teeth on that, but hopefully you can see it. So we're going to be very careful here, because there's a couple of sprockets and a spring and all kinds of mess going on there. And we should be able to pull these two screws and just drop the whole thing off the uh, back of the handle assembly. At least that's my that's my hope here. That goes that. And there we go. So now it's off, and you can see the, there's a uh, that yellow gearbox that we've become very familiar with. Um, in all of our auto conversions. So now we should be able to take this silver screws out of the rest of it here and split it open and see what's going on in here. I'd like to replace all the motors and convert it to LiPo. One more in here. Give me a little bit Okay, I don't see any more screws in the body. Let's double check and make sure that we don't have one inside the battery tray or something like that. Doesn't look like it. So in theory, we should be able to get this thing to separate now. Whoops. All right, well, there goes the battery door. I don't know if I took all the screws out of it. Here we go. Well, we're doing something. There we go. Okay, so you can see we're all 130 motors. It's got a pretty good micro switch there for the trigger, so I think we'll even leave it. Um, so it should just be a matter of motor swap, and then once we pop the uh, the flywheels off of here, uh, seeing if we maybe we can improve some crush here. So anyway, uh, let me get some motors to put in it and uh, see what we can do. Okay, so we pulled the cage. Uh, the motors came out super easy. All I did was pop the flywheels off, and uh, the motors just dropped out. Um, again, they are 130s, um, but we may have to do a little bit of sanding and grinding in here. Hopefully, you can focus on it. You can see our, uh, our ME20s that we're going to put in it are just a little bit bigger can, even though they're 130s. Um, so probably have to do a little file in here. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with flywheels. Uh, this is a stock... Nerf flywheel out of a strife, I assume. Um, this is the flywheel that came in this uh, D-Dart Tempest, and you can see it's a it's a much bigger flywheel. Um, so, uh, we'll have to take a look and see if we can get a flywheel in here that has a little more crush. Uh, but uh, So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put these motors in. Uh, swapping the one of the gearbox is not going to be a problem at all. Just put the uh, little, little gear on here and... Uh, stick our ME in there and we'll be good to go with that so but anyway I'm gonna get the motor swapped over and uh, we'll take a look at flywheels when we get back all right so you can see we've got our uh, ME 20s in here just a tiny bit of sanding and these are a nice tight friction fit so uh, that's ready to go let's take a look at these flywheels because this this thing that came out of it is a big flywheel guys now I've got uh, several examples here to play with again this is a stock uh, Nerf wheel, and I don't know where my digital caliper went, so we'll have to make do. I've got my little jeweler saw here that I can slide, and then I'll lock it off and I'll measure it. So, we're just going to take and slide this up until it contacts in the center. Alright, that's good. And we'll lock that off. Take my little tape measure here. And the stock wheels are an inch and three eighths wide, and you can see it's uh, that's noticeably smaller. So let's get in here and measure this one that came with it because I've got some options here, um, and hopefully we can find one that has just a little bit more crush to it. Um, so we'll set that like that. We'll loosen this, slide it up till it contacts. So we're making contact with the wheel. Actually, it's a hair tight. 
I said, sorry about this, guys. I don't know where the hell my caliper went. All right, so that's good. It's making good contact. Let's measure it out and uh, and see how big the stock wheel is because those are big. Um, yeah, they're right on an inch and a half. Okay, so here's the question. Okay, we've got a worker wheel. This is a standard worker. And you can see it's pretty much the same size as the D-Dart wheel, um, but the concavity here is going to cause less less crush. Um, probably a little more grip, but less crush. I've got a containment crew Inferno. These are my go-to wheels. I love these things. And uh, this one we're going to have to measure. We might be close. It's got a concavity, but the stripes in the middle are going to make it close. Um, my hopeful here is actually a Phoenix wheel, which you can see the Phoenix wheel is, is larger. Um, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but it is a little bit bigger wheel, and even with the very steep concave nature of it, I think we might be a hair wider in the center on the uh, Phoenix wheel, so we're probably going to end up going with that. But let's uh, let's measure it and uh, and see. Okay, and I still have it set where we did, and uh, boy, it's close. Actually, that, uh, that Phoenix wheel on the uh, concave is actually just a hair smaller, so uh, I don't know of any flywheel options uh, at this point that's going to make it uh, make it tighter. So we're going to have to rely on just the, uh, the speed of our ME20 motors to get us a little more flywheel performance. So note to remember, uh, flywheels not easily replaced on this thing. If one of you guys knows of a wheel that happens to be a wider wheel than this, with a tighter fit, um, by all means let me know in the comment section. Alright guys, I didn't bring you along the wiring on this because it's a, you know, a small package and it's pretty uh, difficult to show on camera. So um, I'm just going to do a little diagram for you here. You see I've drawn everything out in blue here. So we've got our flywheel cage. The little on-off switch, it's got three pins. The little trigger switch is one of the little five amp jobs. It's got three pins. And our battery connector. So, <clears throat> uh, pretty simple. The positive lead from our battery connector right? and we'll try to draw it around. Alright, goes to one pin on the on-off switch. Just like that. Okay, The middle pin on it okay has two wires coming off like this one of them runs up to the positive on our flywheels the other comes around here and comes to the normally open or the common on the trigger switch and I guess it would help if I drew the uh, gearbox into my diagram wouldn't it all right, and this is the gearbox for the pusher. So it's got a little tab that sticks out here that turns everything. All right, so sorry about that. Shouldn't make videos at you know one in the morning. All right, but anyway, the uh, either the common or the normally open, it does not matter on the little switch, comes off and runs to the positive on the gearbox. All right, so from the battery connector uh, to the, again, the, it has three pins, so in this case, it's just a matter of which side you want to go on, but it doesn't really matter. Um, worst case scenario, guys, if you had to put it on this one, just on and off would be reversed. Um, and so to one side of that, the center pin comes out, okay, with two leads, one up to the positive on the flywheel motors, Okay, the other down here to the normally open or the common on the trigger switch, it does not matter. Um, and then whichever one you didn't use, common or normally open, out to the positive on the gearbox. The negative is super, super simple. Okay, it comes from the flywheel cage, daisy chains onto the gearbox, and straight to the battery connector. 
that's it. Uh, that, you know, it's a very, very simple uh, wiring. It's a little more complicated than a standard strife, but it's less complicated than an auto strife with, uh, with motor braking. So, uh, you know, feel free to rewind and take a look at this. Uh, watch it, you know, a couple of times if you need to, you're not 100% on how to rewire it. Uh, but all in all, uh, you know, pretty easy job to uh, upgrade those motors and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully uh, get some really good results. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm all done. So, what we did here, um, and hopefully you can see, the suction cup darts that go in this thing are shorter than standard darts. Uh, so where this cage was, was unacceptable. You couldn't run regular darts in it, and I didn't want to just use these little suction cups that I came with, because I don't know how available they are or anything like that. So what I did is, uh, and let me pull a dart out here, I think you can probably see it better. Uh, I cut the cage off, made four little uh, tabs out of just a piece of scrap Kydex, and glued it back on uh, with enough space to clear for these full-length darts. Now you can see I opened up the back of the flywheel cage as well because it sticks out quite a bit and it will also inhibit uh, these things from running around. So open the flywheel cage up, like I said, glued the guard back on so that way when we shake the blaster, even though the darts rode forward, and some of them did, you can see they moved there, they're not going to fall out um, because that's kind of a problem with this blaster. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, you know, I think that's going to be a pretty successful mod. So you can see here I've got some AccuFakes, some Precise Pros, some Waffles, some Kooshes, the Suction Cup Darts, and some regular Release. So anyway, let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and uh, you know, see how well it fires them. Okay, so here we go, a little fire test of this thing. Um, and then we'll get on the chrono and see what we got out of the uh, motor swap and uh, we're hoping for a good rate of fire here So hopefully this thing is the little dart hose that we were uh, looking to turn it into P.S. This is gonna get really loud for my headphone users And there it is guys uh, completely empty So no problems there. So eh, very successful uh, set of mods Let's get on the chrono and uh, see what we got. All right, uh, see if we can get some chrono numbers. Now this thing is shooting so fast, we're probably gonna have to try to burst fire it here. Uh, but we'll see if we can get any numbers on it at all. Again, P.S. It's gonna get really loud for headphone people. As you can see, it's shooting super quick, but uh, we did get a few across there. So we had uh, eight, eight good reads here, with a high of 82, a low of 62, and an average of 75 feet per second. So that is like a 25, wow, actually more like 28 uh, foot per second average uh, increase and the fire rate is just insane on it now. What a super cool little blaster. All right guys, uh, well, yeah, a uh, very, very successful set of mods on this uh, and uh, inexpensive. I used ME2Os, we did three of them, so you're taking like, like 1050 and a little bit of wire and an XT60 connector and uh, wow, what a major, major big difference. Uh, the 75 FPS uh, Flywheel, uh, you know, muzzle velocity, that's a huge improvement from what was 47. And the fire rate, I don't even know how fast it was. I'll flash it up on the screen for you, like up here, um, after I review the, you know, firing demo. But it was, uh, it was pretty quick, probably 10 darts a second. So I can see this thing being a great, like, little secondary, like, hose down a zombie horde kind of blaster. And then, uh, you know, for HVZ or something like that, and then 75 FPS, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. It's a close range thing. But, uh, so, yeah, uh, very, very pleased with that. Uh, guys, if you liked what you saw, remember to hit me with a like, subscribe, smash that notifications button uh, so you can uh, get in, be first in on our new content coming out. We have it coming out all the time. And until uh, next time, guys, this is Chris for Project Nerf saying have a blast. <laughs>